Well, welcome back for what I hope will prove to be the victory lap in this series, the final video. And it would be nice, because I'm ready to move on to something else, tell you the truth. Last time you remember that the TV vertical would not hold, and uh, I kept moving up and down. And in the old days, we used to call that rolling. What's TV doing? It's rolling. You know, when the vertical won't hold, it was rolling. You don't hear that term much anymore. <clears throat> anyway... I went back to the drawing board while the video was uploading to YouTube. I just pulled out the schematic. I tipped the uh, chassis up on its side, and I started probing and poking. I, it was all unplugged, by the way. You don't work on any of this stuff while it's plugged in, uh, especially with it, when you're checking resistances, okay? Don't do that. But anyway, I checked everything, just like I did up here with the brightness. Remember, I just told you I checked everything a couple of videos ago, trying to figure out what the brightness problem was. I thought maybe I had the same problem here, you know, a bad solder joint that was heating up going bad, or, or who knows, you know, who knows, you know. I checked everything, checked everything, spent a lot of time. This is your vertical hold right here, right there. It's a 500K pop. That was good. I, I disconnected one end, checked it good. Everything was good. All the resistors measured out. And I pulled the tube, cleaned the pin, the same rigmarole I did up here. Guess what? It all proved to be good. Every single bit of it. And uh, I was I was pretty much, I was beginning to get really frustrated about this point. You know, what on earth could be the problem? What was causing the rolling? Well, the next day, something happened. After I posted the last video on this TV, I got a comment from one of our good subscribers, uh, Sporadic Z. And he said, nice raster on the generator, no problem with the vertical hold on the test signal. Some DVDs and VCR tapes would suppress the sync signal to make them difficult to copy. Try another source over the air, see if it locks, whatever. That made perfect sense to me. It seems to me that I had heard that once before or it had been suggested by another of our uh, subscribers a while back, something similar to this. But, you know, at the time I was in the throes of trying to figure out why the schematic was not matching up with what was in the chassis. And I got sidetracked and until we finally realized, uh, Brennan and I, or I should say Brennan, realized that we needed to be using the rider's schematic uh, instead of the Samus Photofact. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and try this. We are going to try a different source uh, for, a, you know, a video picture. Well, I disconnected the DVD uh, player and I went ahead and hooked up the VHS player and put my grease tape in, which I really like. And here's what we have now. Look at that. No more rolling of the picture tube. How about no more rolling of the picture, I guess. So apparently, uh, you know, the advice was right. Uh, they do mess up your sink so you can't record uh, the DVDs. Well, that that's kind of sucks. I guess it's effective. Let me go ahead and turn it up. It looks really good. I get it rolling maybe once every few minutes. It'll, it'll kind of roll once and then stop. I think it looks really good. Really, really good. I like that. Let's go ahead and remove the grease tape and put in uh, tape one of the Titanic, which is my all-time favorite movie of all time and uh, see what that does. Boy, what a great, this, this is really great. Totally locked. I got a little buzz, but I think that's coming from the, uh, from the VHS player, the tape player. This is really good. Locked in really nice. Super duper. Tell us, Rose. It's been 84 years. Okay, just try to remember anything, anything at all. <laughs> this is great. Do you want to hear this or not? This <laughs> yeah, that was a great response. It's been 84 years, and I can still smell the fresh paint. Yeah. The china had never been used. The sheets had never been slept in. Titanic was called the ship of dreams. And 
It really was. Man, I'll tell you what, this was my favorite movie. Fantastic. What a great picture, huh? Fantastic. Ooh. Well, I know it doesn't look it, but we have made tremendous strides on this television. <laughs> Let me see. The picture tube's over here now. <laughs> and the chassis is here. And the frame that has the halo light and everything in it is in the back room. Well, everything was going along fine. I had everything back into the, into the cabinet. And all of a sudden, the speaker began to rattle. It rattled cr like crazy. I, when, I got that, when you got some, you know, some of the low tones or low frequencies, it started to rattle just as if the speaker had cracked or something or had a hole in it. So the only way to get to it, it was the speaker that was down in the front, the small speaker that was down in the front behind the halo light frame or the escutcheon or the basil or whatever you want to call that thing. The only way to get to it and to check it out to see if it was ripped or had a hole in it or something had happened to it was to remove the picture tube, remove the basil, remove the chassis, and, uh, you know, yeah, I had to take a very close eyeball of it. I'll show it to you here in a second. Well, over here is the, uh, the halo light frame and the speakers right here. You cannot get to that speaker to take a look at it unless you remove the chassis. And all you can do then is, like, shine a flashlight up. But you can't look up in here. You can't do anything. So the only way to do it was to just, just bite the bullet and take it out. Well, I'm very happy to report that I could not find any cracks or breaks or holes in the speaker cone but that doesn't mean this is not bad and the connectors uh, are nice and tight and, and uh, a wire goes in there I made sure they were nice and clean and we are fixing to put the entire thing back together you know I have a friend at work and uh, I've been kind of keeping him abreast of what's been going on here <laughs> I told him how I, I got a speaker rattle and I was gonna have to work with it after all the work I've already done and he told me he says you know he said, if, I, if that TV was mine by now, he said, with all the stuff you've had to do to it, he said, I'd have taken a hammer to it. <laughs> now, the problem could be this, this uh, audio output transformer right there, which is connected to the output tube, which is the 6AS5. You know, now I've tested the tube and I've cleaned the pins again. You know, I went through the standard, you know, the standard, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill checks. Things that you have to do. And, you know, this thing could be causing a problem. I don't know. It, it looks okay, but, you know, who knows? I don't know. It could have been the VCR. Uh, but first, I, I changed tapes. It could have been the tape. I changed tapes in the VCR. Nothing changed. There was still a big rattle there, so... I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe when I get it all back together, it'll magically fix itself again. That would be nice, huh? Well, there it is. The sound is fixed. Everything is cool. It looks really good. Really good. Turned out to be the VCR. The heads on the VCR were really, really dirty. I don't know why, because I had cleaned them. I guess these old tapes I've been using have been really gooking them up. But anyway, I went ahead and cleaned it with a pencil eraser, which works really good. You gently do it, and then uh, clean them with alcohol, and then uh, blow them dry with air. And this is what you get when you're done. It works really well. The sound is great. Picture's great. But I had to check. You know, I had to make sure that the speaker hadn't cracked. Uh, and there's no sense in doing everything else. You start from the beginning and work to the, to the end. And uh, now I know for sure everything's good to go. So anyway, let's go ahead and get her back in the, the chassis, back in the cabinet, and see what happens. We all know who this guy is just by the music alone. Yeah, Sean Connery, the first James Bond. Yeah, 
I remember going to the movies. I remember going to the movies to see this when it first came out. Boy, I tell you what, it was a big hit at the time. Well, right now I got the chassis in there. I don't have it fastened down with the screws, and I don't have the back on the TV. So let's get that done and get this placed in the corner where it's going to go and make some, you know, last-second adjustments on the rear of the chassis to get it as good as I can. But, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, a TV from 1956, I remember, this is about as good as it's going to get. I mean, that's just the way it was back then. They didn't have these crystal clear, uh, you know, pictures like we do today in digital and uh, flat screen and all that stuff. So don't expect a great deal because this is about as good as it gets. Well, there we go. She's all buttoned up. The back is on. The knobs are on, the antenna is connected to the uh, VCR, and I've adjusted all the final adjustments on the back, and I'm going to go ahead and stick it in the corner where she's going to reside. Now, probably in the process of moving it from here to there, it'll be all out of whack again, but that's the way it was in the old days. So let's get her moved. Well, there it is, folks. There's where it's going to stay, right there in the old corner. And pretty soon I'm going to turn out the lights and I'm going to watch uh, the rest of this Goldfinger James Bond movie. And wifey, she bought me a lamp for it. Nice little lamp. I like that. She thought this would look a whole lot better on the old TV. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it looks like. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's turn off the light. All right. Let me sit down in my old easy chair here. Zoom in on it a little better. Boy, that's a nice picture, huh? Nice picture. Oh, it's awfully dark, though. It's awfully dark, you know. I don't want to go blind sitting here watching TV in the dark. We better turn on another light here. Let's go ahead and get that done. Room 119. Look at there. Ah. <laughs> yes. The halo light is lit. Right now, I've only got it on the first uh, brightness. I don't need it all the way up because it is very, very old. I don't want to take any chances. But isn't that neat? Well, that's it. We're going to have to wrap this one up right here. I appreciate everybody uh, being with me. Wait a minute, there's one thing I do have to do, though. You know, if it wasn't for old Sporadic Z, I'd still be over there in, uh, near my workbench fiddle-farting around with this thing, trying to figure out why the vertical wouldn't hold. And he's the one that told me, as you recall, you know, that, hey, it's probably the DVD or, in some cases, the VHS tape. I listened to him, and it worked. So, you all know what that means. Shout out to Sporadic Z. And uh, that's it. The restoration is complete. And I appreciate everybody hanging with me on this uh, video series. It was supposed to be 10 videos, maybe 12 at the most. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man, I plan to enjoy this TV for a long time to come. And my buddy Brandon played an absolute instrumental part in this right from the beginning right to the end. Incidentally, I got another email from him today. He said he's still recovering. Still going, you know, he's getting stronger and stronger. He's still going, I guess he's still going to rehab too. So it'll be a while. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and officially close this, uh, this uh, Halo Light, uh, Sylvania Halo Light television series. This TV is restored.